Hello and welcome to another Matrix 7 stream, very conveniently on the 7th of July at 7 p.m. for us guys over here in Slovenia. And we're going to be building the Fractal 7 XL. This is actually the release date that pre-orders go up for the 7XL distro. And we're going to talk through every possible configuration that you can do with it and explain a little bit how Matrix 7 is going to work with other cases as well as just this one. So, roll the video. Hello, and hello everybody in the chat, especially hello Mr. Glover, glad you could join us, and I guess we need to get straight into the 7XL, but let's have a little peek at the hardware first. So, the board we're going for is actually the first board that we offered a Matrix 7 monoblock for, so this is uh, the Momentum 2 for the Crosshair 8 Extreme. Uh, we've used this board in a Matrix 7 build in the past with just a CPU block and there we had to use a little offset 3 adapter but here it will go straight in with no offsets because of course complete Matrix 7 foundation element from the monoblock itself. So uh, when I say foundation element there will be three different elements to Matrix 7. Uh, Foundation is a part that is grounded in a position in the case. So this monoblock is positioned exactly the same time in the same place relative to the ATX mounting holes of this motherboard. Uh, a CPU block, however, is not a foundation element because the socket could be anywhere and, and we have no way of prescribing that to motherboard manufacturers. So for now, uh, CPU blocks will require some adjustment, but the ports are still laid out vertically and you know the inlets at the bottom, outlets at the top, just the same organization, but very slight variation in position from board to board. Uh, then onto the GPU block, again, another foundation element because this is always positioned in exactly the same place in the case because uh, it's fixed basically to wherever the PCIe spec defines. And this is a 3080 for the Win 3. Uh, it's a low hash rate, not that that really matters for our application today. And uh, this is equipped with the full active backplate set. So as you can see, uh, the direct link terminal, which allows us to pick any configuration. And in this case, we'll need both ports on the block side rather than the backplate side. Uh, and additionally silver side cover there to tie in the theme so we're going just a little bit silver obviously we have uh, a standard black 7xl that's the the only 7xl color that's offered at the minute i would have liked a white one so i could use white rads for the first time but nonetheless uh this i guess is the main star of the show so this is the reflection to specifically for the xl fractals it will fit uh, what we have here, the 7XL, but it will also fit uh, the Meshify S2 XL in exactly the same way. So in, in the past, our Fractal uh, Reflection 1, uh, we designed it for the R6 and coincidentally it fit everything on a new platform, but uh, it, it never really fit the XL to its full potential. Uh, this one will, however, so we can fit 360 and a 480, which brings us on to the rads themselves. Of course, uh, quantum surface rads for the Matrix 7 compatibility, and these are decked out with phase fan prototypes. Don't think that, you know, phase fans are coming next week. Uh, sadly, not happening, but you know, uh, they're well in the works and we're just trying to get the performance to 
match the expectations when it comes to the looks. Uh, in all honesty, I think we'll be seeing them next year rather than this year, but we'll do what we can do. They'll be coming first in the 120 DRGB flavor that we have here, and then there'll be white frame, all black ones, and then we'll move up to 140 sizes. So we have the P360, which you just saw, and we also have a P480, which I won't pick up because the fans are loose. Uh, the maximum that the case is going to support is X360 and P480. You could go slimmer, uh, you could fit push-pull in the front if you remove the outside filter, but the cool thing is you don't have to remove the outside filter and you can fit fans on the inside now, uh, which is a nice improvement from the original Fractal distro we had. So I'm going to put the motherboard and the GPU to the side and the first job is going to be to get the distro in the case. I've never done it before, hopefully it goes smoothly. We'll see, I've actually never really done any of this before. Um, but, you know, from, from what I learned doing the Matrix 7 builds in the O11s, I hope it's going to be just as smooth. I will get all the panels off. I already swapped out to the, to the meshy one. Give, give me a minute, uh-huh, much easier than it looked like. And there we go, we're practically in the case now. First thing we're going to want to do is take all the stock fans out. So I may as well start at the back because I can reach it. And then I'm going to discover that they're all cable tied together. We'll be in a big mess. People commending the choice in, in 7XL. It really had to be on, you know, considering the date. The 7XL was the way to go and I managed to persuade everyone to speed up the launch a little bit. So you'll be able to go check it on the website right after the stream and in a few days the pictures from the build will be on there too. Ah, cable management skills. I'm, I'm not promising too much on this stream. Uh, we're, we're trying to find a balance in like what we can get done in one stream. That's why I have the, the GPU prepped, the monoblock prepped, so I have a bit more time to explain what's really going on with the distro and a bit more time to watch the chat. And predictably, everything's cable tied together. Oh, there's another piece of the case, which probably is going to make life easier if I take this out. This little guy. That's much better. Sorry, I can't show kind of everything on both sides of this thing to camera, but I hope you can imagine getting this out. And I think we need to turn our attention to the front to get the other fans out. Uh, basically, I'm going to mount the distro first and then I know exactly where to position the radiators. I don't think there'll be any problem with that. Uh, but if I put the rads in and they get locked in place, then it will be hard to change. Does the front just pull off? Well, we're going to find out. Hey. Very good. So 
These cables are already loose, don't need to worry about those. Is there a prize if someone finds an error in the EK manual? Uh, no, sadly not. Sadly not. It's, it is possible. We have a massive amount of manuals, a massive amount of products. Even the ones I've written, I know there's errors in there. Occasionally, they're going to slip through. Uh, we're, we're also, though, uh, while we're on the subject of distribution plates, rolling out a few updates. So you will notice already that the Evo manual uh, shows you the direction of the coolant flow. So there's one annotated sketch with, uh, with little arrows on all of the channels. And you can see now, very graphically, if it, if it wasn't you know, perhaps obvious to everyone how the pump is configured in the distro, you can see which order things are going. And hopefully that helps people figure out what's actually going to happen at each one of the ports, at each one of the holes when they trace the loop through uh, in the manual and they can compare it to their build and they can see kind of what they've done if, if they've maybe skipped a, skipped a part or something. Uh, I really want the 7XL distro but need space for my hard drives. I think there's going to be space for one cage afterwards. I'll have to confirm, but yeah, have to have to do sacrifices sometimes, and big cooling is not going to compromise. Not with not with what's coming. I need promo code, boss. I'm I'm not the boss. You need an Attila for that. Uh, fortunately, not with me this evening. Any news about the EK screen? The EK screen is going to be in the shop very, very soon. Actually, it's, you know, it's done, they're, they're in stock, all the machine parts are done over here. And we're just prepping last little touches on the, on the product listing and the packaging. That's basically ready to go. We'll also be seeing the screen reappear in some other products. So it's just the beginning for screens. Oh, I see. It, it might fit if I wiggle. This is fun. So the, the distro itself is actually going to replace the side bracket that's originally in the case. So this this bracket, the smooth one, uh, that's going to come out and the distro will go on the same mounting holes, basically. So I'm told. Yes, host, you do need to get ready very soon to mount the seven inch display in the in the double torrent. Does the double torrent have a name? Uh, with the side blocked and laid to the front pack with tubes and fittings, how do we drain? I presume, Amok, that you're discussing the either the Evo or the XL, and you can fit a tube to the drain valve to help out. Um, it's not always super accessible if you didn't have if you didn't have that forethought like if you if you literally just put the plug on but the the drain valve itself is super easy to operate even when you can't see it you know you don't need to find which way it goes you just pull it back so if you've got enough space to get a tube in there and perhaps like a micro 90 or something that you can do with the key uh, would help out definitely something to think about before you fill your build up uh, and you know, in in the worst case, like you get it really wrong with with the distro or with draining in general. Um, the th the thing that I always do is you know go back to the fill port, the top port, the high port, and drop the fill bottle tube inside and use it to suck it out. And then once you get below the level of one component, take the tube off, move to the next one, and you can get around the whole loop. I mean. If, if the soft tubing is kinking for 
draining. It's not a big deal. It's still going to come out slowly, I'd hope. Uh, you named it the Tweak Torrent. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a, it's a bit more than Tweak Torrent. Right, so... Let's take off the big door. I saw some screws up here at the front. I think there's one through the top. I'm not hiding behind the case. It's just very big. Yeah, th three original parts left on the on the torrent, and you're calling it a tweak torrent host. Very, very modest, if ever I've seen it. Uh, and bringing up great memories of the of the rate the rate my build. So the last thing we filmed before Attila went to vacation. It was, it was really funny to do, and I know we'll be back with another one really soon, because we practically did the whole thing instantly in one take. Uh, I don't know what rating I'm aiming for with this build. I know it's not going to be don't take it apart ever. Just don't, you know, have the time in one stream to, to go through that level of detail, and we do need to take it apart because we only have so much hardware here. <laughs> hey! There we go, now we have a big, a big distro sized hole here. I'll put it down. Um hard drive cages. You know, I, I could read the manual before the stream, but... Uh. So, th these guys... These guys both have to go out. And then we're down to the cage. I feel like... It is screwed in the bottom. Great guess, me. Five centimeters longer than stock, the torrent. Nice. I don't think we need an extra five centimeters in this. Okay, nice to hear that we have more subs for rate my build. Like we, we I don't know, we needed to put together like probably 20 to make the episode and I think in the end we picked 30 and that was just taken the first ones are Facebook and a few from Discord, and we had like another 80 builds on Facebook, and then we have a whole a whole library of where people have uh, submitted builds to to ek.com. So we, we have on the landing page a place where you can send your builds in. Uh, we didn't even get to look in through that. That's just a huge database of about 250 more builds to check out. <laughs> Okay. You guys don't want to see under there. It's just a mountain of random case parts from fractals, from Lianlis, from prototype cases that don't exist, the MSI case, Attila's build, a little bit of the Glacial build under there. Everything that we throw out of a case is going down there. Right, so I'm going to need the M3 screws to mount the, the distro plate. I don't have the M3 screws that came with it because it wasn't retail, it, it was our like, internal sample, so I'm going to borrow them from Fractal. Mm, looks UNC. There we go. That 
should do it. So again, just like the bracket that came out from the case, the distro is gonna screw uh, one, one screw in the top, two in the front edge, and one on the sidewall from the back. So it's, it's solid and it's flat and it's as it should be, safe to, safe to ship. Here it goes. Okay, tighter than I first expected. I know I need to get this foot through at the top, maybe the top first. There you go. There we go. I can see it's just a it's just a tiny bit too high, so maybe sitting, oh yeah, sitting on the fan connector. We're there, we're, we're in the ballpark now, okay, see through the hole. Don't fall over, don't fall over, don't fall over. Do that miss. Do, do, do. I suspect that my screw is a little bit on the short side. Take these cables out. Top line's up good, but just the length of the screw. Okay, great start, but now I, now I need to get it flat. Get these guys on the side. Whoops. That's got it. Did I get it? Nope. Uh, what color fluid? I'm gonna be using navy blue, so not solid, but navy. And that's if I can get past these screws. Like I said, I didn't have the the real screws. I'm I'm trying to fit the little tiny original M3 screws from the motherboard 
into the distro. That was a bit of a mistake, but hey. Excuse me while I fight this screw. All right, we made it. Now, one is missing and for the rest of the stream, I think we might live without it, unless I've just spotted the problem that this this little plate at the top is actually sort of pushing the distro back a little bit. I'm gonna loosen it, see if I can... Wow. Good job, Fractal. That's, that's pretty tight. Uh, the plate does look sweet. Now it fits in the case. It's it's even more beautiful. Uh, hi, Georg. Hawk, any update on the w SWRX8 processor blocks? Mm, not certain which socket that is and if we already have an enterprise, uh, already have a pro product developed for it, but I expect we do. Yeah, and if you meant WRX80 like Yaka says, then we, we have all the Threadripper blocks, so the Threadripper magnitude, the Threadripper velocity, and more already. I don't think that was installed with an iFixit. Uh, does the distro plate amplify vibrations from the screws since it's hard mounted? Uh, actually, the, the sheer weight of distro plates really helps to keep them quiet. Um, not much uh, manages to resonate when it's attached to like a, a, a two kilo block, like really, really solidly. And we we run D5s on all of our reflection distro plates, so they're they're super quiet. If this screw bites. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that was the problem. Just these these two little screws from the top bracket just didn't let me get close enough with my short screw. Uh, I now realize that all of these cables should probably go behind the distro plate. Uh, anyway, they're just cables. I think that's probably why a live stream build can't be quite as good as if I was doing it, because, you know, if it was me, the distro plate had come back out, all the cables would go through again. All right, let's check the next stuff. So the top rad needs to go inside. And for that, I guess, I can drop the whole bracket or the bracket comes out. What happens, Fractal? Maybe I'll just pick it up. So I'll do my best to get the four end screws in and then have it a bit slidey. I'm not sure what you guys can see now. Probably, probably blocking you. Yeah, soon, soon TM for the 
DDC combo and it is awesome. Uh, so here we have a full set of uh, four phase fans on the surface and you can see that they're all linked together with one chain of cables and then it's just one connector at the end. So this just has a standard uh, fan and standard DRGB. So really helpful. Horse says the top bracket if you remove the screw, the screw, one screw. Okay, let's try. I hope this was the screw. I don't have two screws. Ah, thanks very much, guys. Not much room on the length. Is it the right spot? I'm not sure if that helped because the radiator is a bit longer than the bracket. And I feel like, feel like I've made it hard for myself now. It might slide past, but it might not. May as well try. And let's hope these screws are long enough. So, okay, we've got choice of front or back. I think we need front. can do with as many as two screws and just check that it actually goes in there. Uh, and I'm going to take care of these cables while I'm here. Everyone who knows me knows I would just cut these off immediately, but maybe someone else wants this case after me, and maybe they'd like the front panel headers to work ever again. And I put them through this nice gap that the, the bracket leaves, and that should give them a nice place to run around the distro, around the radiator, Safely, safely away. Good. Oh, it did, it did go. And it needs to come forward. You can't quite see, but I'm, I'm trying to line the ports with the, the ports here. So there's a pair of ports. One goes uh, like down and back to there, and one goes directly in a straight line. So I think I need to go towards the front one. How does this bracket go on its little rail? Got like clips. Okay. Yeah, that's all good. Let's put the screws in. Should use four screws, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna use all the screws. I'm not leaving the fans loose, just the more I put in, the harder it's gonna be to adjust it 
if I need to slide it forwards a bit. It's probably going to be hard anyway. So I'm going to do this so I can see. Just like that. Okay, now, now we can get four screws or 16. Hey, Justin, hello. Just the four, I can't do just the four corners because the middle fans have got nothing. Because the, fan, the fans are on the top here, not on the bottom. If I was just attaching the radiator, maybe, maybe four, although, I, you know. I'm in the older screws camp, unlike, unlike our friend Attila. Didn't we, didn't we have that on a, on a previous video? Are you, how you camp all of the screws or most of the screws or the sheer minimum screws. They're actually a bit tough because the bracket's sort of springing away from the dampers on the fans. Uh, but we'll get them, we'll get all 12. Don't even worry about it. Oh, actually. Ah. There's like a slot and then a hole. And I remember now, the guy who made the distro said, I'll make it line up with the hole, famously, so that you know where the right place is. And, uh, yeah, I feel like I gotta do that now, sorry. That was it. I was only a, a millimeter away, maybe less. It might be a stupid question, but are the new fans 28 millimeters or the regular 25? So they can go each side of the radiator without interfering with Matrix 7. They are, in fact, some millimeters thick. It's more than 25 and it might be with the rubber. I don't know. It depends if you count it's like it's muddled state or it's uncompressed size or it's like squished size. But yeah, it's near as makes no difference 28. So if you have if you have like a 011 d XL where the bottom radiator is an X and you thought I'm going to do push pull with an S. Uh, you could put one set of phase under and one set of phase over and it would work out the same same thickness as an X because you'd, you'd add 28. I know it, you know, like nominally it might not be exactly 28, but it it is in reality when you account for the, for the squidginess on both sides. Uh, Okay, four or something more. Turn this upside down. Yeah. 
Hey. Well, nothing fell out. That's a that's a good start. Nothing fell out other than the screw. Why is this one tight? Is the fan moved? One screw left. Woo! And we are done with the top end. Thankfully, let's take care of this little wire from the fan so that it doesn't get damaged. And I'm gonna put it through the, the same hole as I sent all the other cables. Yeah, that's our, that's our P480 installed at the top. And as you can see, that is, that's the biggest size you could put in this case. Uh, if you tried to go for an X, then the ports will be too low on the distro. And the reason we didn't leave enough space for the X was because the X would start covering the motherboard at the back. That would, you know, make life difficult for cables. Uh, and it would also interfere with the front radiator at the other end, so uh, we've got P480 at the top and this guy's going in the front. It's gonna have the fans on the inside, so lots of space and I think probably we should put the tubes on the top radiator right now while it's, uh, while it's accessible. I'm just going to catch up with you guys. So, will a P360 fit while using the vertical GPU holder? On the O11XL, it might. Uh, it depends exactly how big your vertical GPU is because you can run the, the GPU holder in slots one to six. Uh, and if you have a reference card, that's fine. But if you have, for example, a Photo Win 3 or a wider uh, aftermarket card, then you will want to run the vertical bracket in slot two to seven. So move it down one slot and that eats into the, to the radiator space at the bottom. So it to be 100% safe, like uh, on our example build, we had an S360 with the photo in three in slot three to eight. So the very bottom of the case and that cleared just fine. Uh, I think if you're running two to seven, you can fit a P. Uh, is Matrix 7 a name a competitor can use? Yes, it is. Uh, so we're, we're still in, in the works of, uh, of developing a publication, basically a, a publication of the standard. And we will allow anyone to use the name if they want to use our official uh, logo types and, and our kind of uh, uh, assets for, for Matrix 7 if they want to market it publicly and put it on the packaging, put it on their websites and use the official stuff, then we'll ask them basically to submit the product for us, to, to us, just, just to check. Uh, we won't make, you know, any requirements that we wouldn't make for our own products and then they will be kind of bound not to make any changes throughout the course of the product so we don't have someone, uh, you know, making a prototype which works nicely and then making some other change for, for any other reason than production and, and, and fouling up the fact that it's, that it's cross compatible. Uh, we're not doing it, we're not doing it for our own gain, we're doing it to make it easier for everyone. That includes like uh, upcoming manufacturers if someone decides they just wanna make a distribution plate for, for a rare case or they wanna make their own case that includes a distribution plate, then they can just check what's going for the um, 
through the Matrix 7 document and, and incorporate it for themselves. And at the end of the day, then our products will fit with their stuff easy, theirs will fit with ours, and it's good, it's good for everyone building a PC, not just people building EK PCs. Uh, I used the P360 with the old GPU holder. Okay, well, there, there's a lot to, there's a lot of different constants there. So the old GPU holder is different to the new one. We, we adjusted the position uh, relative to the slot so that the horizontal GPU lines up with the vertical GPU. So that point where the, the two sets of fittings would cross is on the same place. So the GPU placement on the new one is different to the old one and that means the bottom's in a different place. And like you said, uh, your Lian Li fans will be thinner than some of our fans because I think, I think they're just 25, like Noctua is also just 25, but our, our new phase fans and all of the old Vardas are a little bit over, they're around 28. Uh, what cases that aren't O11Ds are planned to support Matrix 7? Good question. So as you see right here, the Fractal 7. Uh, the next one we'll follow up after this is the large, not the giant Corsair platform, but the large Corsair platform, so the 7000D. Uh, then we're looking into the height, so the height Y60, and we of course have the three, the three L11Ds. Um, that's just the start. When we see, you know, any other great case with great water cooling support come along, then uh, we'll certainly make a distro and, you know, invite you to check the Matrix 7 documents yourself and maybe make your own distro. Right. Uh, it's time for tubing, so I'll go through my my fitting bag and I have some surprises as well. So I have the, the new double rotary fitting. At the top, we're not going to need any extenders at all because this is the maximum size radiator. This is the P and it's the most that supports, so no extenders there. Uh, but you can see that the, these ports are horizontal to each other. And so one will go back and one will step out and go around. And for that, we'll use the, the new double rotary. And for the other, we'll use the 90. So I'll go find them. So fittings for this build, we're using the, the special edition blue colorway uh, HDC 14. Uh, these come pre-assembled with the, with the accent and the accent's black nickel in these, so it's the only way you can get the black nickel accent. Black nickel's going away soon, so if you're interested in any black nickel fittings, now's the time to go check the shop. They're all on discount and they sadly won't be coming back. Uh, they'll probably be replaced by a new color. I won't say what. And they were, you know, also we added, we added gold and we added satin in, in recent history. So uh, we'll run here the 90 on the back port and this double rotary 90 on the front port. So this can flip around in any direction and it allows you to make this really convenient offset and the height is exactly the same as the 90. So when you look at it uh, in plan view like this, you can see these two ports end up on exactly the same spacing from the radiator and 28 millimeters apart. So time to get these on and then I will mark up my tube. So let's get these out and on the distro. And this is a fiddly corner, so I'm glad we elected to do it before the front radiator. This is definitely the right time. And with the trusty loop key and the larger of the two sides, Oh, 
we'll get those in. Don't go too tight with fittings and flexi. Uh, just enough is all you need. Don't go getting a, you know, a full length Allen key. This, this little guy, um, the reason they sometimes break is if you're breaking them, you're tightening things too hard. So they, they don't break for, for their own weakness sake, they break because you're, you're being too hard on them. Planning to buy an 011 XL distro. Yeah, I mean, in terms of kind of uh, versatility of what you can do with the case, the this 7XL and the 011 XL are two absolutely fantastic cases. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend either uh, for someone who wants a really straightforward build. And then, you know, I know there are far more luxurious cases out there and I've owned many of them, but uh, in terms of a build that you can just put together in one weekend, it really takes some beating. These, these distro plates combined with uh, the two XLs, they're great cases. Uh, yeah, we ha so we have a, a full fitting list available with support now. Uh, I've been busy writing fitting lists for Matrix 7, so that's, that's all available. And at the moment it's with support, but very soon we will add those as kind of bundles to, to each product on the site. And this double 90 coming in very handy with its six millimeter hex to tighten. I can see this being something that we add to every fitting before long, every 90 fitting available in this style would be really cool. I kind of want it, not just the small ones. Uh, probably one more. There we go, so they're up there. I need to get some tube out and see what 14 millimeter I've got around. Then I'm gonna saw, so sorry, headphone users. Then I'm going to be cutting the ends off my pre because I got pre for the CPU and GPU just to save you guys having to listen to the, to the heat gun. I'm sure I won't need them to be this long. So let's steal the end. What have I got to mark it? Do I have a pen? No. Knife it is. Okay, I can see it. So let's cut that. Matrix 7 question, okay. Will Velocity 2 Kinetic that got announced a couple of weeks ago, will it come with the option to not have a DDC? Um, I, I don't imagine so. Uh, we'll see, but we're, we were actually contemplating removing like all of the body versions, so everything that doesn't have a pump from the site, because you know, we're making a lot of different versions for myself, for, for ourselves. Uh, 
and a lot for resellers as well to stock every time we make like one different version with no pump it's a, it's another EAN and if they want to have even just one or two on a shelf it's it's money spent for them and not much added value to the user because we can't physically cut that much from the price by removing the pump uh, we'll see though uh, if we get public outcry to add versions with no pumps we can do it okay let's see how it did I did the front one first which I don't know what I was thinking but I did it no problem there it's in both of the o-rings very nicely it looks as best I can tell pretty straight so I'm gonna need I know I'm going to need one 56 millimeter shorter for the for the back screw. Screw, what am I saying? For the for the back fitting. So now I can check this one and measure the other one. This one is 115. Okay. Let's say 116. Take my 56 off so 60 millimeters for the other one. Yeah, Justin, you're quite right. I saw it's a bit overkill, but, you know, Attila was on the Makita catalog. He got really excited. There we have it. At the time, we didn't really know we were buying it for tubes, and it sat there, and we never used anything on the set, even though we had all our awesome Makita gear. And then one day, it's like, we can cut tubes with it. And it gets it done. Uh, wow, I thought there was a user called FLT120 then when I saw that, like, in the middle of the lines of text, that's some dedication, but no, that's a long question. If you need a tiny reservoir for the Revo Dual D5 pump, would you recommend the FLT120? Uh, no, I'd recommend getting the smallest little X3 that you can get and putting the port with the single top with the extender and you can like male female it directly onto the d5 uh, and just put the shortest tube in and then it will all be the same kind of width whereas a 120 will probably make it bigger <laughs> the 120 also it's a bit tough to get air out of it especially with like that kind of ridiculous flow from from dual d5s i marked the the saw is a Makita. Uh, all all the kit we got for the for the room when we decked it out was mostly all Makita. We use Makita uh, products to assemble everything in EK practically. So uh, we tried to support our local Makita agents. That's on there nicely. I'll get the other compression ring, 90, and then hopefully there's just enough space to tighten it. I don't need to move the radiator. <laughs> oh, I've been way too short. I definitely did some bad maths on that. How big did I make it?
Are we gonna release Mental Hard Lab in tune? Yeah, we are, we have it. You saw my samples last year when I built my 909 that's, that's still here and not at my house. But uh, yeah, they're on the way. Uh, probably, probably this quarter, I hope. And <laughs> we have all the colors perfected at this point, I think. And uh, we're close to the, to the end of the tunnel with those. Uh, I was, we were considering using them today, but you know, didn't want to tease just too much. I think that the only products we're teasing here is the, the double row three. That's not actually out yet, but as you would expect coming soon, I don't know. Got him. I, th I see the mistake that I did now. It was not bad mass, but the fact that uh, this fitting is much less, uh, uh, the, the end of the fitting is much closer to the center line of the port than the double rotary. So, they're not exactly the same. I considered that I was using like two identical 90s, but in fact, my double row three was quite different. So I made it much too short. But there we go. Got it right now. Uh, your three rad build in the XL used the Crosshair Extreme. Yes, it did. We also did one with the Maximus Hero. Uh, if I use a crosshead dark hero, will I need to offset? Ooh. That's a great question. I don't know every motherboard by heart, sadly, and I've not used, I've not tried to use a crosshead eight, but uh, every Asus board we've used has been three millimeters off, apart from the Apex, which I needed a seven millimeter offset. Thanks for reminding me we're teasing the phase fans. Yeah, that's a, that's a strong tease. And conveniently, if you've noticed, we had seven phase fans today. Am I doing my cross thread in this? Feels like it. There we go. And we'll put the front tube in, then we're done with that radiator and we're on to the next one. Asus ROG Extreme monoblock launch date. Uh, by ROG Extreme, I presume you mean Z690 because this, the X570 Extreme that we'll use here, the Crosshair Extreme, uh, that's already released. That was the first one we released and it's in stock. The Z690 Extreme, I think is up for pre-order right now and stock should be on the way soon. Okay, so that's that. The, the front tubes are in up there, if you can see, guys. And now I'll get myself ready for the bottom tubes. And for the bottom rad, I'm gonna be using extenders because it's actually uh, not the thickest option for that position in this case, so it could be an X. So we'll need 14 millimeters uh, of extension. And then on the front tube, it will need 90 millimeters. So it goes uh, like 
around the back tube. When I say back tube, we can actually use the, the push and fit things here. So I will cut one tube and I'll push the other one. Uh, so I'm gonna need two 14s, 128, one more 14, one seven and one push. Okay, so we're done with that box. Let's get the rad. I could already put the fans on this one before the stream, so that saved a little bit of our time. So first up, the 14s are gonna go directly onto the radiator. And that makes up the thickness difference between this and an X radiator. If you used an S, then these would be 28s. That's good. And then the front one will need the big extender, an additional, an additional 28. There we go. Now the 90s go on. I'll leave that one a bit loose because I'll probably take it off to install the, install the tube. And this one won't have a tube. So we'll get that tight, then I need the last fittings on here. So first a seven, then a fourteen, because we don't have we don't have a twenty-one yet, but you can always make it just like this. So seven goes on first. and then the push. So this front port, it's the only port on this distro which has uh, the ability to use a push fitting. So I'm gonna use it just to save having to try and, and you know, wiggle in this little assembly with a tube as well. Uh, I think it's gonna be much more straightforward to just push that in there. We'll need a little bit of, of coolant on it just so that it's uh, lubricated that it slides together. Generally just put a little drop of clear coolant on the O-rings and that gets them in nicely. Do I live in Slovenia? Yeah, I do live in Slovenia. So I moved to join EK about four years ago now. Da -da -da. Let's try it this way, so. Unfortunately, this is kind of behind the pump. I hope we can still tighten it. If we can't, I'll just take off the pump. Mm. Okay, this could be fiddly. Absolute winner, just enough space for one sixth of a turn there. So they are in, and I need to take out the original extender which is fitted inside the distro. So you can maybe just see it if I show you. So this is uh, a male female extender which goes properly in the distro, uh, and that's fitted 
just so that you can use it as a normal port. But if you want to use it with a, a push-in fitting like we have on here, uh, then you have to get that out and then you have a place for it to just slide in instead of uh, instead of screwing in, which really helps in little cases like this. Well, little places, it's really not a little case. Twenty twenty three is probably accurate for the fans, unfortunately. We'd love to have them much faster, but we'll do what we can do. Don't use foam, use the other piece or plexi. I don't remember putting any foam inside. Whoops, if I did fill it with foam by accident. Uh Right then, so this is now open to get that pushed in, that stack. Uh, so yeah. Let me find some coolant. So I have lots of fill bottles and predictably every single one is filled with colored coolant. I think we have... No we don't. Mystic fog it is, it's, it's basically clear coolant. Yeah, maybe just kick the last panel a bit there. Uh, would an extender work instead of the push-in fitting? Yes, uh, the, the push-in fitting you could exchange with the female-female rotary, but the, the tough thing about that is, is you know trying to get in there to grip it, to keep one end tight and to run the other side in. Uh, whoops, okay. I think that saves getting coolant all over the fans. Didn't save me though. Right, so one thing I also need to watch out for is where the cables are going, just so I don't scratch up the distro. This is tight. I think to avoid any lasting harm to me or the case, I'm gonna take the pump off. I probably needed to anyway to get the, uh, get the fitting inside afterwards, so. Might as well get it off now, use my flexible bit. I think if you don't if you don't have a convection then you have a bit more space to get this done. Uh, if I had how long can cryofuel coolant last in a system before changing it? Uh, we recommend uh, that if things are well prepared and the first 
the first fill of coolant goes nicely, uh, that it should last for six months. You can, you know, if you, if you have like uh, a not too sensitive color when it comes to appearance, like the non-solid ones or especially clear one, you can certainly push a long way beyond uh, six months. And, you know, in, in our testing, we've seen people no problem run into two years. So you can make it last as long as you want, but I don't think, I don't think it's worth it in the end. Uh, I would recommend first things first, flush with clear coolant only. Uh, so get yourself some extra clear coolant, flush the parts with that, especially uh, radiators. I don't think you would get any damage from, from products which are like entirely plexi, like a distro plate, but it certainly doesn't hurt. It certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, oh. Okay, let me examine where this cable has got stuck. That cable is not stuck. That is the RGB cable from the distro. I was moments away from ripping it off. Uh, What tools would be required and how are you taking off the pump? So I took the, this pump off. I already took it off earlier because I fitted the uh, convection cover so it was all silver. And that was partly what was blocking it for me because this makes it bigger than the pump itself. The, you know, the pump itself in there is quite a bit smaller uh, and I didn't quite have the, the maneuvering space for the radiator to get around it. So uh, the pump is just screwed on with M4 screws not super tight because they're also in the plexi. So I'd used just just the iFixit with a, with a two and a half millimeter uh, hexagon. And to put it back, I will use a 0.6 newton meter, newton meter uh, torque screwdriver just so I don't overdo it. Uh, okay, now, now we have a bit more space for this guy. Looking nice. Just maneuvered the push in inside. One O-ring is properly in there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna screw the top of the radiator just so it's not flailing around. Let's just put this pump in a safe place. And there are my screws. I need the Phillips back. Oh, what about the new torsion case? So the new torsion case is actually I'm very excited to say that it's in production already. We confirmed the first little order. So they'll be along very, very soon. Can you please tell me what is the extension called? I'll order it right away. Um, this this little flexible extension comes in the, this is like the middle size iFixit. I think it's called Mako, but I don't quote me on that. Don't remember 100% the name of this one, but I know we have it in our store that you can buy it. Uh, it's very reasonably priced for what you can do with it when you wanna get your extension on. And this, this can like weave into just about anywhere. It's really good. Uh, I need to push my push a little bit more. So it's gone like 
a little bit off square. And I'm going to loosen this up. So that I can kind of get them both on the right place at the same time. So the distro is true to the, the push fit thing. Can you use white vinegar and distilled water to flush? If you have nickel, really simply, if you have any nickel plated parts, no. Um, distilled water will cause a lot more problems and especially if you're preparing to use a solid coolant afterwards, which has the, the particles suspended inside, uh, use of distilled water will basically uh, pull all the ions off the plating. It can lead to the degradation of the plating or, or speeding up of the process uh, and the more distilled water you use the worse you make it so if you just put coolant in for a moment and drop it out and cover it in fresh distilled and cover it in fresh distilled and, and flush like that then you'll do a lot of damage to the nickel plating in a pretty short space of time so uh, definitely not and the best thing for nickel plated products is clear coolant. Uh, if you want to avoid nickel plated products entirely, make sure you've done that with your fittings, make sure you've done that with every part of every block. Uh, it's actually hard to do these days. I know our copper blocks are not very popular. We don't offer them in all of the ARB models anymore. Uh, not many velocity or magnitude copper blocks sell. So I think you probably have nickel in your loop and, and distilled's not the way to go. Small form factor water cooling. Yeah, awesome fun times. Uh, we'll definitely have some small form factor projects coming up before the year's out. It's always a great chance to show off tiny products and big skills. Okay, now I've got the rad on right. I'm just gonna check what happened with the push fitting and maybe see if I can push the distro like onto it. I'll probably lie it down on the front so I can push, push down nice and square. I can see that it's right here behind this plug and I can, I can see through the plexi that I'm coming up. Okay, and when the moment's right, the screw will go back. So I think everything's safely locked in down there in the basement. Uh, I'm gonna take care of these fan cables before they become a problem. If I weave them around this tube, I think they'll be pretty much out of sight. kind of have the connector on show from the front side, I don't like it. So, scratch that idea, I'm gonna go, gonna go like back down the front side with them instead. Oh 
and we can go out down there under the pump will be much neater. Uh, so I've got one, one tube to make in the bottom. Uh, it's going to be tough, but get my tape measure in there. Okay, just just over 80 millimeters for this tube. Let's cut it. that a water block is or, or a CPU block is better than a mono block because of the mounting pressure um, that's definitely true in uh, mono blocks of old but our recent momentum twos actually have the same mounting mechanism as uh, as the velocity two so I'll, I'll show you when we get our board out which is the next step uh, that should even the playing field a bit. Obviously, you put more heat into it with with the VRM being added to the loop. So uh, don't expect it to perform better comparing the same loop for the same loop because you, you have more heat in there. But it should perform uh, pretty close these days. Uh, all the engineering that goes into the Momentum 2s is exactly the same as the Velocity 2. Uh, yeah, a Apex VRMs can run without any heatsink. Probably run without any heatsink on Allen 2 as well, just from the uh, cool air near the board. Uh, I'd love it. I'd love to hide these connectors a bit more, but it's got a bit fiddly down there now. Let's see what I can do. got one let's see if we can get the fang through I got the RGB through sorry you can't see the action I need something XL case with the new front distro. It's gonna be nice. This is also an XL, I guess. Okay, that's through. Should we just chance that the tube's perfect first time? Could be. Ah, oh, the, fr the fractal, like the seven mesh, uh, I don't know, the, the kind of cross pattern, it's like absorbs O-rings if you drop an O-ring on it, like it looks like nothing can fall through but everything can fall through.
All right, so that worked out just right. Using a Z690 Extreme Acer Shrug with whatever EK is preferring the most expensive. Okay. I mean, our, our most expensive CPU block would be the Magnitude, and that certainly has the best like outright performance if you just care about the CPU number figure, and then our kind of ultimate solution for the whole board is the monoblock. Uh, so it just depends exactly what you're interested in. Okay, so two compression fittings to go in down here. And then I'll put the pump back. Okay, that's all nicely together in the basement. Uh, uh, maybe I was a like touch low with the front rad. It's looking a bit kind of stressed. I'm gonna loosen these up so I can slide it. Okay, round about there is where it should have been at. Probably explains the difficulty with the with the push fit thing. I just had it like a bit twisted. Ninety into the bottom wind it. Uh, Yeah, maybe a video, yeah. Uh, EK sent me a long list and I need to tell what fittings to use. Okay, we, we have like a full list of fittings now for two of the Matrix 7 distros, so we should be able to get back to you pretty easy uh, if you chose like a monoblock. So if you, if you chose a f like like we have here, like a foundation element for the distro, obviously, uh, a foundation element for the monoblock and a foundation element for the GPU, as long with the radiators, which we have like a known compatibility list for each case, we have a known like list of fittings, uh, then we can tell you like exactly uh, which fittings you're gonna need to do it. Uh, however, if you have a normal CPU block, then uh, we don't currently have like a, a, a logic behind exactly which offset pattern you will need for which exact CPU. So there need to be a little bit of experimentation. Uh, if you want to get it right, I would say the easiest thing to do is to pick up two offset threes, two offset sevens, two offset fourteens, and uh, a fourteen extender so the offsets can go around each other. I'll, I can I can find them and, and show you if you'd like. Uh, and when you weave them around each other like that, then 
uh, you can put those on the distro plate at the front and it's, you know, it's pretty neat. Uh, and then just make bends at the back and you, you can make like any combination of motherboard and velocity to fit with any reflection to distro pretty easily. Um, just a, a tiny bit of creativity. And if you're very lucky, you will find a motherboard that lines up perfectly. Uh, I think that the Hero does. The Z690 Hero, I think is exactly right. Don't quote me, but one of the boards we used uh, when we made the three Matrix 7 builds, we had a Z690 Strix E, uh, the Hero, and the Crosshair. The Crosshair needed an offset three up, the Strix needed an offset three down, and the Hero was just 28 mil extended directly to the CPU as if it had a monoblock, so uh, that was exactly right. So now we're gonna put the pump back on and I can see that the O-ring's gone, but I don't know where the O-ring's gone. Did I lose it when I tipped the case over? There it is. Uh, you need this, this O-ring, uh, the gray one which comes with reflections is if you have a D5 and that ends up sitting like directly on top of the steel of the pump and if you have a DDC then it's it's black o-ring is included you can still mount the DDC to the FLTs and to the reflections you know for some reason I don't know if you wanted the DDC to have a tiny bit more uh, head pressure than a D5 so if you wanted it uh, you could put the DDC on here you'd also get a little bit more space and you could use the little convection not like they're, they're all cross compatible so we'll stick the pump on and get some big long screws in So with, the, with these pumps, like because the because the O-ring is really soft, it's best to tighten them in a cross pattern like you would a wheel, so diagonally. Uh, and then I basically just take up all the slack so that I know it's flat against the distro and it's not really wonky. And then I'm gonna use the torque screwdriver, which also fits with the flexible iFixit thing. Convenient. And that's it. So now the pump's back, threads are in, everything's tight. Okay. Deal with the cables later. Uh, so we're gonna start laying things out for the for the motherboard for the distro. I'm gonna take all these plugs off because I requested nice satin titanium ones. So we'll put all the plugs on. I won't lose control of where the iFixits go. Just gonna flick flick all the covers off the plugs. I'd like to see a Z690 Extreme Glacier on the Reflection 2 distro. Okay, so the, the Glacial is um, unsurprisingly like a much earlier development than all of the Matrix 7 stuff. 
and even the second generation quantum thing so it doesn't play nicely as as a user found out today it doesn't play nicely with the vector 2 active backplates uh, it doesn't really play nicely with its diagonal uh, port space port placement and like interesting stuff going on in the top corner uh, but it can be done just need to go back to the days of uh, modding and, and uh, you know making it fit right if your standards are high enough I'm sure you'll get it perfectly perfectly there in the end I don't I didn't read what fastback 77 did but if he's getting props from Yaka it must have been awesome uh, kind of see it I don't know, Pro props from me too. I'll check what it was later. So I'm just taking off all the original plugs so I can upgrade the plugs to Talkie Boys. And I'll go find the plugs. So I've got the selection of the big plugs. So this is a, a standard torque plug. And I've also got some, some micro plugs. So you can see massive diameter difference, but a little difference on the thickness. And they both do exactly the same job, just a case of how they look. And, th and these are a bit easier to, to handle. Uh, so these are nice for like fill ports. So I'm going to put this one up top on the fill port place. I'm also going to put one on the back of the graphics card where there's not much thickness. And for all the others, uh, they're going to get the micros and they need the micros because these ports for the GPU are so, uh, so tightly packed um, because they're all close together. They're all spaced for like uh, PCIe spacing. They're, they're 20.32 millimeters apart, uh, then you need to use the small diameter torque micros so you have enough space for full size fittings. So I think this case has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine slots. So if I put the vertical GPU bracket at the very, very bottom, then with the for the win that we have, I'm gonna be using this bottom pair of ports at the front. So uh, it's gonna be down on this set. If it was in, well, let's say slot one to six with reference, it would be here. If it was in two to seven with reference here and three to eight with reference, it will be here. Uh, in the case of uh, AIB card, like the for the win three, like the Strix, like the Trio, they're 21 millimeters wider which means you basically add one set of holes. So this would be the place if it was in two to seven, this for three to eight. And here, if I go all the way down to the ninth slot, which the XL has. So I'm gonna go down and that will give a bit more space around the monoblock. You'll get to see a bit more of the motherboard. Should look just right. Uh, so I'm gonna need four micros at the top and I'm gonna need all three at the bottom and I hope I have enough one two and it was hiding behind the black part of the bag saw to cut the pipe yeah yeah, we have a saw to cut the pipe. Uh, we have uh, a big Makita uh, miter saw, I think you would call it, on the back. Uh, it's a bit overkill. I don't specifically recommend getting that for sawing little bits of acrylic tubing, but uh, it, it'll do it. Let's 
So the other port which needs to go here is the, the drain port. So uh, I think you've probably all seen how the drain ports work now, but they basically have uh, this final plug so you know that it's definitely closed. And this actually holds the valve closed so it doesn't fill up with coolant in the middle and like fall out when you take the plug off. So this ensures that the valve is closed whenever it's installed. Then when it comes to open it, uh, you remove the plug and this collar slides back and that opens it up. Uh, and when it comes to tightening it, uh, well, okay, so you've opened the collar and you spin this, it's not actually connected to the base, so you don't accidentally uh, unthread the fitting from the distro plate. Uh, but when you want to tighten it, it rides on to this, to this hexagon uh, and then it all locks together. So when you tighten it, tighten it by the collar and it will grip. And when you come to undo it, it won't ever undo itself. You won't ever get coolant trapped in the middle and just the perfect guy for the job. Uh, much better than the ball valve. If you just want it to drain, of course, if you want it to be in a loop, uh, if you know if you want to have this in line with a CPU block or something then the ball valve is the right choice because that's actually full cross-section open to the coolant and these just have like two sets of holes and the coolant wiggles around so they're a bit they're a bit restrictive if you wanted to use them in line but fine like this uh, they also come with one accent ring inside already and I'm going to take it off because it I don't have this one anywhere else. I've got the black one, black nickel one. Ah, oh, it's stuck. Okay, I'm not gonna take it off. Too close to the pump for me to grip it. Uh, okay, so there are four left. Two of them are for the back. So we can have a look at that now at the distro. Because quite honestly, I don't think we're going to get to the filling stage today, but I'm sure we will finish the loop. So uh, here are two more plugs, which you can use just to fill and drain the system. Uh, so that's a bit more convenient to access fill port from the back side of the case, and you have a nice drain port, but there's not enough space on this drain port to actually fit the drain valve because the back of the case is too close. So it's, you know, it's just there if you want to get the last little bit from the pump and from the bottom. Well, this is the front radiator. Uh, you know, you can lean the case on its back, attach a tube, and then you'll get it out. But it's really close to the edge. And I think I should have got a torque micro. So I'm going to check if we have any spares on the wall. I'm in luck, so the guy writing the full list of fittings for this, take note that you can't fit, you can't fit a big torque there, you need a baby torque. That's probably gonna be me. I have to watch my own video to do this. Yeah, manual saws, manual saws are a bit boring. Uh, I don't know which cases you were looking out for, whether it was one on the back that I just went past or if it was this, but the one we're working on today is the Fractal 7XL because it's the 7th of July and we're doing all seven stuff today. I'm going to need those for the distro and everything else I can hide. So that's the stuff on the back side of the distro taken care of, apart from this stuff. It's all good. Uh, so let's get to the board. Uh, as I touched upon earlier, the, the board with the monoblock equipped then becomes a, a foundation element to Matrix 7. And 
uh, the third classification, which I didn't mention at the start, was supported. So if a product, such as a motherboard, a graphics card, or a case, has uh, a Matrix 7 compatible or foundation block available for it that aligns perfectly, then we will say or allow uh, that the manufacturer can claim that the board supports Matrix 7. So uh, while it might not be a water cooling product, because we make a monoblock available or another manufacturer makes a monoblock or a distro plate or whatever, then the original hardware can claim that this is a supported product. So by extension of having the foundation monoblock, this is a Matrix 7 supported motherboard. I guess we'll probably like write our own QVL, QVL style list as well in extension to the, the configurator that we have. And that means that these ports are going to align perfectly with the two ports on the distro plate, I hope. Uh, and the same we'll see when we put the vertical bracket in. Our new vertical bracket, again, is a Metric 7 foundation piece. And we'll put the uh, GPU block on it, which is, of course, also another foundation piece. Everything straight up. Uh, Joe, just saw you rated my build with Attila, the one with the external rads in the Apex. Yes. I, I mean, I saw you spam Facebook with a number of builds, and that one with the, with the Apex stood out for me. Like, it was the most unique choice of hardware, and the colors looked just right in it. Uh, perfect. Like, really, if... If the last like details of cables and everything came through with that kind of uniqueness that the uh, the color scheme had, like the combination of lighting and coolant was amazing. So uh, we enjoyed that one. Uh, I see Varun there in the chat skipping on his vacation. It's time to get back and review some more radiators, maybe, maybe soon. Nah, uh, it's okay. Yeah, we do have the patience of Max. Uh, waiting for the radiators and the fans. And don't worry, we'll, we'll get back to it. Uh, I don't think this stream has been that long, has it? I have no idea what the time is. Okay, two, two hours. We said it could be two and a half, and we're putting the board in now, so maybe I'm about right. Maybe I kept all the video team out. Oops. It just, just occurred to me at that moment how heavy this is and I don't want to hold up this probably three kilo brick of aluminium and plexi while I fumble a screw in, especially not when I'm filming it. So we, we, we can do it the noob way. Test rads anywhere, Varun. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess cheap London air conditioning is going to mess with it, but eh. you've got to do what the users are going to do. You know, they don't have a perfectly controlled uh, laboratory at home. They might be using their PC in a cheap London hotel, and then it's Completely representative. Uh, it's no, no problem to be explaining stuff. That's uh, as much as why we decided to do the live stream as, as anything. You know, we're not just showing off. I'm definitely not showing off. I'm really making a mess of this, but It's nice to chat with you and, and hear like what's not what's not always going smoothly or what's not clear, what's not communicated from, from what we've said and figure out what we need to do moving forwards, what we need to get written down, get on the website, get on paper, get in all the marketing. Uh, yeah, this build is going to use the vertical GPU holder. So we have the, the new one, the Evo, not shifted because we don't need it. And 
Have I been using the wrong motherboard screws the whole time? Oh. Why is one of them attached? What's going on? Something very strange here. I appear to have attached only one side of the motherboard. Nope. Okay. I'm going to take it out. Double check. This one at the top fit really nice. Yeah, grommets. I'd forgot that grommets were a thing because I don't remember the last time did I use a case with grommets. Uh, all right, I'll move them now. <laughs> oh, so now the screw was attached. Not sure what's going on with these. It's really weird, so the, the screw feels like totally loose, like I've put M3 inside UNC, and then when it comes to take the board out, it will not let go. Okay, grommet, so these, those plastic things come out, and I move the rubber things. What is this? Oh, it's genius. Never seen anything like it. Stunning. I would have just put two sets of grommets in. It's kind of weird because the other plastic things are styled to look like grommets. I mean, it's only weird to someone on YouTube because I'm, you know, looking at the camera and not what I'm doing at all. Yeah, good there. Wait, from behind? No. Aha. I did it, yay. Uh, am I in the US? No, I'm not in the US. I'm in Slovenia, in the EU. Uh, that's where the majority of EK's operations are based. So I now realize that those are in fact not M3 screws. And I probably need this, this little bag of UNC ones. Yeah, okay. Well, it was, it was pretty lucky that I messed that up with the screws, otherwise I would have been really upset to take all nine out to move the grommet. Let's get these out.
I feel like motherboards would have the big like armor on the back. They don't find their place on the board on the case quite as well. Like they can slide around pretty easy. these don't fit either. Yeah, it, it's saying something about my loop building skills if putting a motherboard in is more effort for me. see ah this is the right screwdriver bit for the job now now I'm blaming the tools but now I've really got some purchase on them will the eco distro plate for the R11 mini fit the R11 air mini sadly not the air mini is pretty much a completely different case regards the structure and the layout. I know it looks this similar on the outside, but the internal structure is quite different. So sadly not because there's the place for Yes, uh, the place where it should go is kind of blocked by the fan mounts which they add to the front. I'm maybe going to put it upright now. I think we've got enough screws to hold it. I really can't see them. Oh god, it's heavy. Generally, I find builds get heavy with the power supply and all the cables and the coolant. But for this one, the motherboard is an just absolute slab. Nice, 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 nice. And those two I left out because that's where the vertical bracket's going to go. So I think now. It's time to build the vertical bracket. All the hardware was already uh, already mounted on the motherboard. So we've got a Ryzen 5800X. We've got four eight gig sticks of Royal and an M2 drive in the DIMM2 just in case we need to pull it out. We could also get however many more fits in there, probably three. Uh, we don't have just the covers. Uh, 
You can't buy like literally the piece of plastic on its own, but you can buy uh, a set of 10 of the basic plugs and the covers together. The reason we did that is because there are actually two versions of this plug and the, and the old plugs are really hard to tell apart if you, okay, if you don't design them, they're really hard to tell apart. Uh, I see it every time, but one has a big chamfer and it's actually slightly smaller and it fits the plug cover properly. But the old, K, the old original plugs that we put on every like uh, EKFC block, every X-Res, every like millions of products out there that I know everyone has a massive tub of the old school EK plugs at home even if they don't realize it. Those ones sadly don't fit the plug cover and that's why we, we put them like in one pack together. Right, so vertical bracket. And my knife. So there we have our riser cable and all the brackets. We need to check that we get the right screws because there are actually two different sets of screws in here. So we need to be a little bit cautious uh, that we use the UNC set. Uh, one of these is M3, one's UNC. So these skinny ones obviously M3, so we can leave those in the box and we just have the right pieces out on the desk. Uh, these are the parts of the bracket which go on the motherboard and this single-sided one allows you to put it like extra high up if you want to. Uh, I think we'll be using this one and we'll just get like the last screw in because we're all the way down in, in slot nine. So I'm gonna pop these standoffs in. Being quite careful not to mangle all of the pins on the motherboard. It's a bit close with the heat sink on. Hopefully that's tight enough and get a bit more space without that. Not really enough more space. Probably need some rams out. This is tight. Uh, I wonder if there's a hexagon in there. Doesn't seem like it. Try a smaller one. I know way back we had some products like this that actually had a, a hexagon in the bottom, but annoyingly this one doesn't. Can't quite get it. Uh, what do I need to take off the board? I'm guessing this comes off 
from the back only, so it's not really an option at this point in the build. Maybe I can be really sneaky and put the screw in it and tighten them both together and be lucky enough to get the screw out. Let's see how that's gonna go. Absolutely beautiful. That's the way to do it guys. Very gently put the screw in, spin both and then hold it and take the screw out and drop the screw. Okay, so that's uh, properly in now. It's a bit close, but we did it. That's it. Okay, now we need to build up our bracket and for that we need the very smallest screw. There's a little tiny countersunk screw in here and I will definitely need my small Phillips bit. Let me think that goes out. Screw goes through. Yes. The top doesn't matter, the thread. Ah. We got, we got there with the vertical bracket. We found a new method. Uh, I kind of like the first version of the vertical bracket, which had the acetal spacer, but things move on. These ones, as just proven, can be a bit fiddly, but we did it. Uh, so basically, this part goes into the case, and then the other part mounts on the two standoffs we just installed. This is not a happy screw. Let's take out the bottom six from the case. Uh, yeah, this is a PCIe Gen 4 cable. Uh, it's a link up sourced cable. It works very good.
Okay, so with that opened up, we can offer the bracket inside. And I just wanted to check that these actually overlap with the nine slot because I honestly couldn't remember. But they don't. Okay. So we will go up one at the back. People seem to be really going at it about the plug covers, I think. Black nickel covers, yeah, we could make every combination, but it's just too many. So I think now this means that I actually got the wrong slot here. These need to come down for this size. I forgot the bracket didn't go that far down. And I think basically once we have this bracket inside, we can put the GPU on finish the tube and we're done. Well, we're done for today. We're not done with the build. But we can't have everything. Uh, oh yeah, now, now you're getting into it with the plugs. It has millions of different plug options between micro, uh, the big torque, the big torque, but with the badge on plugs with the covers on, they're all good. I mean, the plugs with the covers are fun if you want to like line up all the EK logos, but the others are just extra special looking. So, because I want everything to be silver here, that's what we're using today. Not necessarily what I would choose every time for my own build, but often. have yet you certainly can talk to our support agents about the exact fitting list uh, they have it now so uh, they should be able to clear everything up Out of like genuine curiosity from me, like when you're looking to get a comprehensive list of fittings, is it so that you don't buy any extra or so that you definitely have the right thing for what you're trying to do? So, you know, if, if we were to, let's say, offer them as a pack with, you know, a bit of a discount or something that you get every single fitting you could ever need for that distribution plate, would you rather that it was precisely right, no extras, and you paid the absolute lowest price possible? Or 
would you rather see that you've got a few spares for, I don't know, the eventuality that you change your motherboard or change something out uh, in the future? Like, would you rather just have a bit of a mixed bag and a few extras and, and stuff like that? Like, I know it's a, it's a big deal to like overbuy and then be missing some and pay shipping again and import again. Uh, so I guess like extra helps, right? Or not? I did realize I didn't install any IO and we're not going to do cables today. Sorry guys. Uh, I am going to put these little stickers on just to protect the block. Okay, so that's that and GPU time. I just need the, the space to access it here. So I'm going to take one cover off extra. To get some finger space. Okay, so here we have the Photowin 3, which is already blocked, pads and paste, everything's done beforehand. Uh, it's a fresh block though, I just put it on before the stream. We'll need two plugs on the back side, don't forget those, otherwise you'll have a puddle on your motherboard. Still with the protective sticker so we can have a little peel. And now I need to carefully drop that in the riser. I need to slide forward the connector. Uh, the, the like riser connector can actually slide just a tiny bit and I have it a touch too close to the back. That should make all the difference. No collisions. I was, I was a bit worried about the plugs like against the top M2 heatsink, but there's lots of space there even with the active backplate. So good. So some UNC screws for the back. Those motherboard screws should be right. Maybe if I can get them in.
Oops. One day. Got a big bag of screws, so. We'll get there. It's really fiddly because it's kind of blocked by the case. Um, not the best tool. Uh, but we got it. Let's get it in the perfect place. Get them tight. And put the slot back. Yeah, thumb screws would would have done good, but I've got what came with the case, and there were no spare thumb screws. I couldn't even steal them like over here from the front, like fractal vertical bracket, because they just got plain screws. We got them in. We got them in. Bit of help on the plugs for T-Bot. The front where the glass is, well, the taller five and a half plugs fit. Oh, the big torques. I, I've got a case down here to check, and I will do it and write it in the chat afterwards, if I remember. Uh, I wouldn't want to say without actually checking it in an Excel, but I'm pr I'm pretty sure that it does go because it's it's only a tiny bit thicker than the plug we cover. Uh, okay, so I think we're ready to peel the front side. And get on the fit. Oh, lost him. So we got those, and we've also got the little tiny trapezoid stickers on here. So that's those, and I think that just means I need to bring in final fittings, and we're all there. Is it perspective or the card sagging? I think the card is very slightly out at the front, which I don't have much control over to like push it back. I'm not sure why, but I tried as much as I could, but I think it's just that. It's not like up or down, but just slightly towards the back there. So I'm going to put uh, 28 millimeter extenders at the top on the motherboard and I expect that that is enough to clear the DIM2 and everything on the board because it generally is. 
so with these 28s and 90s, then I'll use the prevent tube to go to the distro. And similarly on the GPU, the, the front tube will have just the 90 and then the back one will have a 28. So the tubes come around each other and then forwards with one bend to the distro. That's why I have the, the prevent tubing. It should keep things pretty stress-free in the last in the last few minutes of the stream. Maybe. Whoops. So I think I think I've got like more than enough length that I don't need to worry about taking these off again. I'm just going to put them on all full tightness. Again, this 90. Like so. I'm glad you're enjoying watching T-Dub and I hope lots of people get their hands on these parts. Uh, it's all really nice stuff and I love like trying out just a different finish uh, even. Um, today I decided to go a bit silvery and bring in like the blue parts from the, the special edition fittings. Um, main main thinking was to like tie in the, the silver parts of the radiators, the like silver badges on the fans and hopefully it looks just a little bit crisper and cleaner than had I gone full full like full shiny nickel or full uh, full black. So I hope it's just a, a little extra kind of coolness and cleanliness to it with these blue details. And satin like always looks great. Okay, so that's that's all eight fittings. Everything looks like it's lining up good, which is pretty helpful on the first Matrix Seven live stream. <laughs> uh, let me grab my key. Buried it. Uh, Johnny, Johnny knows if it if it can hold a a founders edition that can hold just about anything. Definitely true. The, the founders edition, especially with the active backplate, has to be the heaviest GPU block of all time. But the the good thing it does have going for it is like all of the weight is at the back, you know. And and it's the same for these new like big long massive GPUs, but all of the copper is. At the back half, there's an, there's no big weight out the front of the card, and it does make a difference when you're hanging it off a, a motherboard slot. Whereas like an air cooler, the weight's pretty evenly distributed, and you have still full-on heatsink right down at the end. Uh, you can see now like at the front where I'm putting the the HDCs between the between the micro plugs like you really don't have space for a a bigger plug there the plug with badge or the or the full size torque plug there's no way it would fit without hitting the uh the HDC fittings and these are just 14 so the the 16s are 
even bigger still and the 16s will fit with like a fraction of a millimeter to spare in this case but they are like everything fits next to the micro so there's no worries about selecting a combination that won't fit Uh, so uh, also at the back end as these two like Matrix 7 things are starting to take shape you will notice that the GPU block ports the back one actually lines up Exactly with the monoblock port like because these are both uh, Foundation parts and because like this distance from the ATX point is controlled and this distance from the PCIe datum point is controlled that these three are actually all in a perfect straight line uh, which is which is really awesome to deal with and you know if you are building a loop from these parts without a distro plate it would make a big difference even if you wanted to like loop this one in the offset is exactly 28 so you could put the the 28 offset like that guy we had earlier down here and go across and then forwards to here if you know if you wanted the loop order to be different uh, pushing fittings are only on the basically like the tightly fitted parts of the distribution plate so where there's a, a connection to be made that's so short you can't really fit the tube or or you don't have space to actually work the tube into position that's when we add the push-in fitting so the xl has five this has just one the evo has three Three, I think the Evo doesn't have them at the bottom, but it has the three at the top, just like the XL does. Uh, and you'll you'll probably see that through the rest of our distribution plates. Like we'll use it when it when it helps, like when things are that tight together. Uh, now I need to kind of eyeball up the tubes. I'm going to check the one that I shortened earlier. Maybe we'll get lucky and this does something, but that would be lucky. Uh, so, oh, it's not far out. It's probably gonna make this one. I need to figure out how much to cut off. I'm gonna get my tape. I think if I, if I kind of offer it up to the distro there, try and hold it straight. So to be on the center line, there's at least 105 to come off. So if I take off 90 for now, then it will be close enough that it can actually fit in there to measure it. I know there's lo like lots of, I don't know, ideas on like how to measure tube, how to make it right. For me, I generally try and start with the longest one and get it as close as I can, you know, offering it into place, shortening it, offering it into place. And when the longest one's right, if you go too short, you can use it somewhere else. If you start with the, the short one, you're in trouble. Uh, it just so happens that the offcut I have today is the perfect size for the short one. So not not really leading by example just yet here, but still we'll offer this one up. Oh, the, the length in that direction is really good. Um, just by coincidence, uh, the length this way Santa to Santa, I need to lose 15, and then it should be on point, or, or at least a great reference. And then when I when I have this one, I know for the for the outer one that goes around it here, I need to add 28 on the length of of both pieces, and then I'll have it. So I should be able to lay this over.
Will the upcoming satin titanium mantle tubes be pre-bent? Yes, all the metal tubes will also have a 90 pre-bend. And Berserker, so for the XL, two for the bottom rad, two for the top, and one for the side. That is exactly right, yeah. Uh, basically, like the logic there is on that back side radiator, the front port is really close to the distro, so you can just build it up with fittings, with extenders, and the back one is so far away that it's easier to use a tube than stack that many extenders and much, much cheaper. That is it. Couldn't have gone much better, so I'm pretty happy with that. Like, I've used just one prevent tube and I've got one prevent tube done. And I also have a really good template for the next one. Uh, if I just add 28, or maybe if I'm really clever, I can set it on the inside like that and add 14, because the tube is conveniently 14. I never, I, when, I, when I'm doing the Matrix 7 builds, I always like to use 14 millimeter tubes because I think it's funny that, you know, it's also divisible by seven. And it's really helpful because you, you can put, like stack two together and then you've made 14 different and then you can add the 14. Yeah. Bendable plated tubing would be amazing. It, I mean, it can be, it can be done, and Ben's been doing it. Uh, if you check Mods by Ben stuff, uh, his recent things were using some of our samples of the metal tube, and he managed to bend it, and you know, in his long radius style without cracking it. So it's pretty remarkable what you can do, and. What have I done wrong? Ah, yeah. I needed to make it much longer than that. But let's, let's check. Okay, so the, the length is pretty nice on the short side and on the long side. I forgot that I have 28 here and 28 here. Too much. Too much building for one day, I guess. I'm, I'm slipping. But still, this, this length is good, so. One casualty. Will I do it with just one box of tubing? Uh, so that, that way was perfect, so. Mark that just the same. And In the length in the other direction, it was approximately 30 short. So let's go.
think that's that's pretty much how it should be. I'm going to try the back one in at the same time. Okay, that's not completely inside. Okay, very good. So this like this long side of this one is going to be the same for the two up top. So I'll mark out one of those. Remember that one and put this on for the last time. Justin, I've been around for longer than Gamers Nexus. Yeah, I don't know about that. I know I've been... Hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> Maybe. He's obviously been on YouTube a lot longer than I have because I was just working like in photography for a very long time, but maybe. I don't mind. Uh, nothing, nothing personal with Steve, just neither of us have time for a haircut, right? Can you also check that the fit thing will fit into the back of the case? It looks really nice close to the rear when the replacement wrap plate. Oh. Well, the fit things fit into the back. I guess you're talking about the XL with the replacement plate. Not sure I follow. <laughs> <laughs> Justin doesn't have time for videos at all, yeah. <laughs> I believe your videos are long. You think, oh, I'm just going to put this case together in two hours and uh, you know the whole build will be finished by Friday. Doesn't quite happen on video. Okay, which one which one was the right one here? Not that one. That one's That one's the one we lost. I wonder if we're gonna make this with just one pack of prebent. I've got two just in case, but I should be able to make four tubes with one. Uh, if, Justin, if Justin had an editor, that would be next level. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like you there, Justin. Like, I, I really enjoy building and I, I like photography probably the most when I'm doing it myself because it's just like so controlled compared with video like things things don't look perfect on video but nonetheless it's makes it so much more relatable for for everyone and you know it kind of gives them a chance to realize that we're not so great either 
UK does need to sell the crown plate the tubes and along not brass cut why not copper you can you can bend the brass ones a little bit but why copper For me, the brass tubes are much nicer to cut because they're that bit stronger. They don't like collapse under the under the pressure of the cutting tools. So I prefer brass. And good. Way too long. Way, way, way too long. Not sure I'm going to get far doing it like this because this is just way too far off. Got to bring it down at least 150. Yeah, copper bends are easier, but like cutting copper, not so nice. I mean, think really like if, if you're being super creative and making like fancy compound bends and doing it yourself, then making it from copper and getting it plated afterwards, probably the way to go. But if you're, if you're on a matrix seven thing and it's, yeah, too long. Uh, but you know, if you're if you're on a Matrix Seven build like this, and everything's gonna be, uh, you know, straight up simple '90s, then I think brass is the right choice. Uh, the, and the and the other catch is that we can only apply all the same plating finishes as uh, the fittings to brass. So like for satin, titanium, and black to look exactly the same. It must also be on brass. So to center, I'm looking at, I'm almost there now. I'm ballpark the right size. Center to center, about 17, 17 to come off. 500 to get plating. Wow. I think you need you need to find the right the right person who's who's doing it for for another job, you know? Because it's not necessarily needs its own like fabrication to like make the rack to hang it if it's just a simple job for you once, but they need to be nickel plating the same finish of other stuff at the same time. Where do I measure on the fitting? I know that the the tube goes in to approximately where the compression ring, uh, where the color ring ends. So uh, just a little bit past the base of the thread. Um, but basically, I'm just kind of trial and error. And, and when when I've been checking it, then uh, like sideways in the build, I just put this this side all the way to the back and then measured from the center of the tube to the center of the fitting. So not even accounting for how deep it goes.
I would say that to be perfect, I need to pull just a millimeter, almost nothing, the width of a blade or less from the short side. And since I've got one spare, I'm going to copy it straight away. powder coat yeah I was watching someone who was uh, PVD coating wheels in black chrome on YouTube it was amazing I kind of want to try it Okay. They seem pretty consistent. And that means that should be the last tubes done. Let's try them. Ah, probably gonna go easiest to do the front first. <laughs> okay, fattening up your powder coat guys, smart, smart move. I guess that's the trick, right? You got to leave them enough food at work that they don't need to go home on time. I would, I wouldn't mind some food on the stream tonight. <laughs>
All right, so I think that's it for the loop, just for the sake of looking good. Let's pop the outside back on the case and that does not go there. Uh -huh. I'm sure once upon a time this was here. There we go. Lights at the top. Don't drop the glass panel. Ah, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm glad you all learned something and it sounds like it's time to sneak off under the desk for a kebab. Uh, I hope you enjoyed checking it out. I'm glad, you know, in, in the end, after a few of uh, my misuses of the case, things went together uh, really nicely and certainly everything worked out just right with the distro. That, that's the important thing on, on Matrix 7 day, uh, that the, the Matrix 7 end of things held up and I was able to put the loop together in really, you know, uh, really quick time for such a kind of high quality of loop. Like, I would have dreamed of making this in a single day when I first started building PCs and, you know, to turn something out that looked that clean was a month's work. and. Uh, not just off the shelf pieces going together. So uh, it's awesome to see it. Massive shout out to Fractal for sending us the case. Uh, they overnighted to it on Monday. It was already with us on Tuesday morning, said we need it by Thursday. So uh, huge props to Fractal. It was fun using it. I should have been better acquainted with it. And I guess we need more Fractals around. So I get used to them. Uh, can't wait until we have a distro plate for the torrent, which will come uh, in the near future too. So stick around for that. Maybe we'll have a baby fractal stream and maybe, I guess, the next Matrix day will be the 14th of July. Maybe we'll be back on the 14th or the 21st or the 28th or whatever suits the video crew through July to finish this up, to put the cables in, uh, get the cable management done right and fill it up. So. I hope you enjoyed Matrix 7 Day and you all learn a little bit about all the product categories we run through and I'll be seeing you very soon. Thanks for coming by.